All right, y'all, we're going to change gears a little bit and um, hit some mathematical stuff that you're going to see pop up as foundations for other skills in AP. So again, hopefully it's nice and boring math. If you don't have a calculator at your desk, you definitely need one. So go and find one in the back of the room. All you people at home, do you see my flower? I have a flower. Um, anyway, I, make sure you have your slides out for this lecture because we're going to be doing examples that you cannot see. Flower. Okay, um, so my, uh, again, my hope is that you're not having to copy this down. Please, I, I, I don't know, I, I can't tell if those of y'all that are still copying down are just forgetting or if you're just being defiant. So, quit being defiant. Hi. Did you, did you create my I haven't. You and I need to do that. Yes, I, I'm sorry. I, I know that the ball's in your court, though, so I'm totally happy to help you with it. But in about seven seconds, I'm going to forget we had this conversation. So, so you come tell me at the end of class. It'll take me two minutes to get you in. I'm sorry that you're not in yet. But um, OK. So uh, <laughs> a couple things uh, are the first thing that we want to revisit is average atomic mass. Oh, get out a periodic table if you didn't already. Um, I'd like to remind you that those values that are on the periodic table, the reason that they're decimals is because the masses are taking into account the different isotopes of each element that exist, and it averages them together. But it's not just a straight up average, it's an average similar to the way that your classes are usually calculated, where one of the categories of your class is heavier than the others. For example, in this class, tests are counted for what percentage of your grade? Not 30. Not 50. 60% 60 of your grade are the exams. It's heavy. All right? It's a weighted average, which makes your test mean more than anything else. That's how it works for average atomic mass also. Whichever of the isotopes in nature that are more abundant, well, they get a heavier weighting in that average, which makes sense. And that's what allows those averages on the periodic table to represent the most common isotope, because that's the one that was pulling on that number the hardest when they did the average. Um, I do want to point out, though, that a lot of times when you're doing average atomic mass problems, it gives you two values. It'll do this thing where it'll just give you an isotope, right, like carbon-12, but then in parentheses it might say something like 11.99877, all right? And this other number that it's giving you is due to what's called mass defect. We have this idea that protons and neutrons are just sitting there with a mass of one AMU and are creating this number when you add those massed particles together. But really, there are decimals involved in the mass of those particles. So what this is telling you is that there's 12 particles in carbon's nucleus in this sample of it. But if you add up the mass, there's a defect there. It's slightly different than what you might assume the mass is. But granted, it's basically the same number. What I want to point out to you about mass defect is anytime a problem gives you both, you've got to use the more specific one. They're giving you that more specific number for a reason. That's the one that you'll calculate with. So what you've got there on the screen, if you can see it, um, but you shouldn't have to see it because you already wrote it down before you arrived today. Um, are two different equations that we use for finding average atomic mass. Well, not for finding it, but when uh, calculating with it. The top one is when we don't know the average atomic mass. And then the other one is the, slightly, the one that makes you think a tad more where you don't know the percent abundances. So what we're going to do is work a couple problems to remind you on how this goes. Okay, uh, so reveal all the way down to three of them. Perfect. All right, guys, so let's take a look at oxygen together. What you'll notice in this first example on your slides is what's missing is average atomic mass. If you look back to what you already wrote for the equation, in order to find average atomic mass, it's a simple multiplying of an isotope number by the percentage. But keep in mind, that percentages can't go into my equations. What has to go in? Decimals. So it's a simple decimal slide twice to the left to turn or divide by 100 to turn a uh, percentage into 
a decimal. So let's take a look at what we would do here. I would take my first isotope mass of 15 and multiply it by its own percentage as a decimal. What is 16.1% as a decimal? 0.161. Now you killed a baby there. All right. But I know you meant well. And then the data sets are added together. So we can move on to our next set of 16, oxygen 16, at 0.83. And then one data set left. Be careful when you're um, sliding decimals for numbers that small. But we'll end up with oxygen 17 times 0 0.009. James Bond's second son. <laughs> Bet you got it. All right, guys, go ahead and type this into your calculator. See if you can come up with an average atomic mass. Let's head on over to somebody in cluster number one. Did you do it this time? Cluster one, seat three. <laughs> totally. What did you uh, What did you get? Okay, so make this note because this is important. It might be new to you. On the AP exam, average atomic mass and molar mass, and we'll go over that on the next slide if you forgot what molar mass is they always round to two digits past the decimal in AP. Average atomic mass, which can be abbreviated AAM if you're, if you love on your wrist, um, and molar mass, always round to two numbers past the decimal in this class. Thank you for setting that up. Now I bet you can spit an answer at me. Say it again. Excuse me? In English? That's a, okay, do it. Uh, not to offend everybody at home. What did you start with? What? What did you start with? No, 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 that was, that was gibberish. That was, yeah. yeah. Um, average atomic mass and molar mass rounds to two numbers past the decimal. Okay, what did you get? I got 15.85. It's perfect, 15.85. All right, and uh, anybody remember the units of average atomic mass? AMUs. Does that for atomic mass unit? It does. Okay. Boom, nailed it. All right, if you'd slide down, let's take a look at a, uh, the other type of problem that uses the other equation. Um, hey, what element are we looking at in this next example? Stupidium. Stupidium. <laughs> what is it? Know it. Know it, AP students. It's not 10. That is the same wrong answer I got last period. It's antimony. SB is antimony. 10 is SN. Okay. Anyway, um... If you notice in this problem, you'll see that um, the percentages are missing. But actually, it didn't give us an average atomic mass either. But the assumption here, he sneezed. The assumption here when the abundances are missing is that you can always go access the average atomic mass on the periodic table. Because, of course, that's what the bottom number is. So 
Looking back on the other equation from your notes, let's take a look at what we do here. Now, there's mass defect going on, so we'll use the more specific numbers. So for the first sample, my first isotope, we're going to go 120.904, and we're going to multiply that by x. x there is the missing abundance of the first element. And again, I'm going along with the equation from the previous slide. Um, so when we solve for x, we will know the percentage of antimony 121. Now, continuing though, we're going to add that data set to the other isotope, which is 122.903. And what do we multiply the second isotope by? 1 minus x. Does, it, does anybody remember why that works? Because 1 is a substitute for 100%. Because 1 is a substitute for 100%. This next, uh, that expression there takes into account knowing that whatever the two percentages are, they're going to add up to 1 if you're using decimals. All right? And then, of course, we set it equal to the atomic mass, or the average atomic mass. So if you look at your table at antimony, that's 121.76. Show me your algebra skills. Solve for x, y'all. You got this. Solve for x. It won't give you the answer to the entire problem. But it's definitely the bulk of what you need to do. Y'all have plans to get a graphing calculator if you haven't already? Yes. You don't need to yet, but we're two units away from you having that. What? If you have not put into action getting a, cra a, a graphing, not a crapping, a graphing calculator yet, put it into action, guys. Um, it's got a solver on it that I can show you how to use if you don't know how to use solver. But All right, let's look up here and make sure the algebra didn't confuse anybody. All right, we just need to simplify. My first simplification will be 
times x, which is simple enough, all right, we'll distribute here and get 122.903 minus 122.903 x equals 121.76. We can now combine like terms. All right. Uh, we can move our, our non-x's to the same side. So, all right, that'll get rid of that guy. And then combine our x terms. You'll notice that this one's negative, though. Let's do some simple math here. 120.904 minus 122.903 will give me negative 1.999. A geese. Haha. -ha. I did one, right? Did I not say it good? No. That was good? Yeah. I, I rolled my R. <laughs> <laughs> the other side, 121.76 minus 122.903. Negative 1.143. Divide to isolate the x. And here's what I get. And let's make sure we know what to do with the answer. You're going to get that x equals 0.57. All right? But realize that is a decimal version of a percentage. All right? So it was the first isotope that we were looking at. So really, SB121 has what percentage? 57% if you convert that back into a percentage. All right? Therefore, what must antimony 123 be? 43%. Because we know that these percentages equal 100. <laughs> You're going to embarrass me not being part of the whole class. No, I did. When I built this lecture, I, man, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Why would I go invent a brand new problem? God, what a stupid head. Okay. What? That is, that is the S word of my house, actually. My daughter said that. Stupid. Can't say stupid. Yes. <laughs> I haven't given you passes, have I? I can't say no then, so yes, you can go. Okay. Um, so, we remember, this looks familiar, at least. You'll practice and be an expert. By the way, realize that all of my pre-AP videos are totally accessible to you. Uh, just like, I'll drag them in. I didn't think about doing it, but I can drag them into your Schoology folder. So if we run into any review stuff and you're just like, oh, I forgot how conjugate acids and bases work, and you remember that from last year but don't remember how to do it, I can give you access to all those videos, guys. There's no reason to be confused on old stuff. Now, let's change gears a little bit. I didn't beat you. I don't care. I'm not embarrassed by the camera. Jacob exists. <laughs> I don't know that I believe that Jacob exists. No, you said I don't have a life. Well, that's not true. I do have a life. No. It's just you. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, uh, let's talk about moles for a moment. If you remember, the mole is the uh, fun made up chemistry word that we simply use for counting the amounts of things that we have. Um, molar mass was the way that we uh, count up parts to get holes. So whenever we want to know the mass of a compound, that would be the molar mass by adding up the mass of each individual part to get the hole. Uh, this slide uh, goes back over the fact that AP only wants two digits past the decimal for all, for all molar masses. And you'll notice that's how it is on your um, AP periodic table as well. I think except for hydrogen. But anyway, so please be aware of that as we go into it. All I want us to revisit today is the simple conversions that involve moles. Because, uh, again, that is a foundational, an intermediate step to a lot of larger processes. So I want to make sure that this simple, simple dimensional analysis is fresh on your brain. I do need to point something out, though. There's a misconception that molecules and atoms are synonymous, and they're not. So while we're doing these uh, conversions here, you'll recognize that the one mole, the periodic grams and molecules, whose number is that? Uh, Avogadro. Avogadro's number to, to represent molecules. Last class I asked that and someone said Planck. It's not Planck, <laughs> but I'm glad that you remember Planck. To get to atoms, it's very simple. It's just an additional step, all right? But we must first go to molecules, and then I'll show you what you do after that. But again, it's super simple. What is synonymous? The same thing as. Like, boys are not synonymous with girls because they have differences. Nowadays. Unless you're gender neutral. Whatever. Okay. And now I'll lose my job for saying that. Um, don't subscribe. You're going to get demonetized. We only have one subscriber right now, and it's me. You're gonna get what? All right. So if you will uh, flip to the next screen, we'll do our first example together. Oh, sorry. All right, guys. Um, yeah, it shouldn't have just said sugar. Let's say glucose. But it wants to know um, if you have 18 grams of glucose, how many moles is that? Um, so let's take a look at that. We've got 18 grams. of glucose, and we're looking for moles. All right, so actually I wrote the number wrong because it is going to three sig figs, which is important. So let's start a dimensional analysis grid to solve. If you remember, we'll start with our given. and build a grid to convert currently grams is what we want to get rid of so by putting it on the bottom of our grid it will disappear and what do we want to go to up top moles, moles. So here's where our conversion factors come into play. You can look back on the previous slide. All right, the conversion factor for moles is one. <laughs> and the conversion factor for grams is periodic table. Now here's where a molar mass will come into play because we need to add six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens together in order to know the PT mass. Keep in mind, you're going to round to two numbers past the decimal. Take 15 seconds and get that. I'm going to be getting the value from cluster four, seat four. So Robin, when you have it, you're welcome to shout it at me. They are. 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 They
You got it? I agree. That what y'all got? Give me a sec. I know. That's what I got. I got it comes out to like one to one five seven or something like that, right? Yes. Alright. Let's use it. It's good. I mean if it's a hundredth off, we will we'll survive. Multiply across the top and divide by the bottom in order to get the final answer. So I'll go eighteen times one divided by 180.16. And remember, we're going to a number of sig figs equal to my starting value, which was 3 in this case. So I'm going to go 0 0.0999. Mm -hmm. What was your question? All, all, mol, only molar mass does that. Molar mass and average atomic and average atomic <coughs> mass, not moles. <laughs> Everything else is going to keep following our normal sig fig rules, and we were given three sig figs on purpose. If you will show, uh, if you will do this next one by yourself before we move into a two step. Solve this problem about oxygen. Have somebody walk me through the squares in a moment. Let's head over to cluster three, seat four. Me? Yeah. Uh -oh. What'd you put in this first square? Uh, oxygen. Can you be more specific about the oxygen? O2. What'd you put down here? And what'd you put up top? Y'all, that's perfect. If you didn't set it up like that, you did it wrong. Any questions, though, or concerns on why it happened like that? It, it is because in AP, the, the constant values are going two numbers past the decimal only. So it's not wrong. It's just not what we're using in this class. Why I can't hear.
No, that, so, but, but you added another section of, yeah, of squares. Yeah. No, that's not wrong. I mean, you're going to get the same answer. All right. So um, what, what did you get? Somebody shout at me. I don't care who. Awesome. Um, one person. E23. All right. Now, a quick note on E. What time do we get out of here? 40? Oh, man. Okay. Wish it was 40. Um, you see the E? I'm totally guilty of writing it. The graders on the AP would rather you write times 10. It's not wrong if you write E. They can't technically take points away from you. But from the research I've done, they prefer times 10 be written. Um, so anyhow, I guess get in the habit of it. I, I've tried to break myself of writing the E, and I, I just can't do it. So they're both right, but if you don't mind writing times 10, uh, then do it. Anyway, um, questions? All right, go to the next problem, please. Yes. Oh, it's an exponent on the 10. It would be times 10 to the 23rd. OK, um, uh, slide down a, a tad more. Now, this is a problem with atoms that has the additional step. So let's work it out together and make sure that we understand that it's a simple step. But remember, to get atoms, we got to go to molecules first. Now, aluminum selenide. Can anybody shout out that formula to me? Very good. Now, you'll find that if you translate it wrong here at the beginning, the rest of the problem, you won't be able to get the uh, final answer. So it's important that your translation is, is on point. Now, it's giving us two moles of that dude, and it wants to know how many atoms of what? What does it want to know? How many atoms of aluminum? Of just the aluminum. OK. So let's check this out. Everything's going to feel the same. We're going to go 2.00 moles of aluminum selenide. To get rid of moles, it'll go down here. And what are we going to convert to first? we got to go to molecules before we can go to atoms. So let's go to molecules. And your conversion factors state that one mole is equal to Avogadro's numbers. Numbers. Number. Is that a question, Annalise? Yes. What? Last year, didn't we use atoms as Avogadro's We did. That's, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what, and you asked about synonymous. I'm letting you know that here that we are officially not synonymous and that the atoms is going to be applied in a different way. But it's just one extra tiny step. Watch. That gets us to molecules. Once we're at molecules and we're ready to go to atoms, the atoms are simply going to reflect the amount of the element that it wants from the original compound. So molecules will go down here. We're going to go to atoms. And in one molecule of aluminum selenide, how many aluminums are there? Two. There's two. So this guy there, that subscript, and your previous slide mentioned subscript when you're doing this, is going to be your final conversion factor when going to atoms. Then it would be one, correct. In which case, the whole step could be skipped if you can see that ahead of time. So I'm going to go across the top 2 times Avogadro's number times 2. And I get 2.41 E24. Yes. Because in no, I, I, I see I see what you're saying. So on the last step, there's some people that will say to not put anything down there. 
because you just need to multiply by atoms because it's confusing. But it's another thing that sets them equal to each other. Remember, the whole point of the squares on top and bottom of each other is that they equal one another. All right, And one molecule is equal to two atoms in this compound. But here, one mole of anything has this many molecules, so they're still equal. Hey, look here real quick. Can you show the next problem? You, you can put your stuff away. I know I ran out of time. But I just want you to rationally see it real quick. Um, it looks at calcium acetate. Hey, stop for a second. Free. I still have you for two and a half minutes. Chill. It looks at calcium acetate, and that's the way that you write it. And it gives you this many grams. So just look at the process there. Grams was given. So of course, grams would go down there. But since it wants atoms, we have to first go to molecules. But this time, it used grams. You can go. But this time it used gram, so it was PT equal to Avogadro. So that 158 number, well, that's this added all up, all right? It's a molar mass. And then, of course, Avogadro's number. But like Annalise pointed out, was this other step even necessary for this one? Because look, it wanted atoms of calcium. How many calciums are there? Yeah, there's only one, all right? So, and that is more of what you were thinking about back to last year in those problems was the step wasn't necessary in the way that the, the questions were asked. But anyhow, um, this is the answer to that last question on the slide. If you want to snap a picture of it, you can apply it when studying later. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm going to Blabberville. It's a real city, I promise.